my piano teacher had exceptional hands. Extending from them were extraordinary fingers. Her fingertips could produce heart-stopping melodies, chords and arpeggios. I would gaze at them hypnotically as she displayed their dexterity, effortlessly demonstrating how the pieces could be performed. Her fingers were imbued with a casual, intimidating confidence, animated with a special life force of their own, manifesting the soundscapes of Bach, Mozart or Debussy. Mrs. Murray's hands became two elegant birds navigating the lightness of air before landing on the surface of water. Her fingers skimmed synchronistically across the breadth of octaves, rippling over the black and white notes. Her skin's surface was translucent and paper thin, speckled with pigmentation like wild bird's eggshells, delicately crisscrossed with pathways of gnarled veins where the blood appeared to flow like faded ink beneath ancient parchment. It was rumoured that Mrs Murray had imparted piano skills to the daughters of an Arabian aristocracy under the shade of Bedouin tents in the desert sands. Unfathomable years ago, in a distant sepia-toned past, how much time would it take until my hands would resemble this landscape? My hands were blank pages. One day I partly hoped to master the challenges of Bach, Mozart or Debussy through observation or osmosis. Practice was my downfall. I always looked for shortcuts easy exit paths from boredom, impatient with the repetition of phrases. I hated the mistakes and wished them away rather than taking the time to laboriously sift through their complexities. I avoided practice and somehow thought I could replace work by sight reading spontaneously. She was never fooled. I was always caught out. My lack of commitment infuriated her. I need to put a bomb underneath you to make you work, she threatened darkly. At one point, I was supposed to have prepared two pieces to perform at the music festival, but they were far from ready. She was furious and told me that I'd be the laughing stock of Aberdeen. I suppose that phrase was a kind of bomb. The notion of humiliation by the entire population of the city was terrifying. The shirker inside me was about to be caught out and exposed. I would eternally be seen for the bad lot I truly was. Shame arose. I practiced and got away with it. The bomb placed underneath me became a part of me. I carried it internally for years, waiting for the explosion.